Well, it's not often that you get a chance to talk to an astronaut, but it's an honor now to talk to Sunny Williams for the second time. The first time I talked to her was in space, and this time you're on the ground. Yes, it's great to see you in person. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Sunny, welcome to WBZ. Welcome to Earth. Thank you. It's really great to be back here on Earth as well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, doing really good. It's coming up on uh, six months since landing, and I, I feel great running a little bit slow. Sure. But, uh, but still feel perfect and uh, been able to see family and friends and uh, do a little visiting and, and uh, obviously got to jump in the ocean so I'm very, well, there you very, go, very happy about that <laughs> and you picked a good time to come back the absolutely. spring into summer is the best time around here absolutely absolutely so when it came to landing and then kind of transitioning back into earth life what was that like um, so it's a little bit of a process uh, you probably saw us getting off of the space capsule and getting onto the, the ship and then the helicopter to take us home. Uh, we weren't super mobile. You can stand up, you can walk, you're strong enough to be able to do that, but your neurovestibular system takes a little bit of a, a hit. And so just being a little bit dizzy for a couple days and that obviously causes a little bit of nausea. Uh, it wears off after like 24, 48 hours. Your brain and your body is smart enough to adapt, so that's great. And then uh, it's a process of getting your both your balance, your agility, making sure your spine is, uh, you know, back in the correct place and then a process of now endurance and finally speed <laughs> sure. speed, speed will come it, it take in previous missions it's, it's taken me about six months or so so I I'm counting on it I'm not saying it's age it's actually just space flight that's there making you me go. a little slow and this yeah. was a long one for this sure. this was a long one yeah when you look back over your life and you know you started out piloting um, helicopters test pilot mm -hmm. and then commanding space missions what do you Oh, all of that too. Yeah, I, I know I, you talk about Needham a lot. Of course, of course, and I, you know, I, I think I directly owe it to my parents for, you know, taking the step and, you know, pushing me and my brother and my sister out there, and, uh, you know, of course, teaching us how to swim when we were all competitive swimmers when we were very little, um, taking the big step to move from my mom's hometown in Ohio here, uh, where my dad he was a doctor all around here, and exposed us to these great opportunities in the Boston area, and of course, Needham was a wonderful place to grow up. I felt like it was a small town, like felt like we knew everybody, people's families. I think everybody knew us at the, you know, well, we would live there as the kids that came into school with the wet hair <laughs> from swimming practice and the pandias, <laughs> sure. you know, it's a little bit different name at the time. So um, it really was a wonderful place where you felt free to, to, you know, jump on your bike, go for a run, know other people and have all sorts of opportunities. Uh, now you're I don't want to say claim to fame because you are known for much more, but you turned an eight-day mission into a nine-month <laughs> mission. Do you ever look back on that mission now and say, like, oh, that was a drag? Or how do you look back at you so, know, your previous mission? It's funny that you say that. Um, I've been thinking about that a little bit. I feel like when I was assigned to this mission, it was the right place at the right time. You know, I'm a test pilot. There are a history of test pilots in the astronaut office, but we are testing new spacecraft. So, like, this is the best thing ever. Um, I will say when we were on the docking X, and the spacecraft was not acting like it should have been acting. I was thinking to myself, maybe I'm at the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Yeah. But actually, uh, you know, as the summer went on and we um, realized that we would be staying for a little bit longer because there was a lot of testing that needed to be done and we were just not going to get it done in that time frame. Uh, again, I think I can. I pivoted as well as my uh, my buddy Butch Wilmore um, to make that the right place at the right time. Both of us had experience on the space station before, so we could jump right in and help them with their activities. And then we had the opportunity to do a couple spacewalks while we were up there, um, and all sorts of amazing science experiments. And uh, you know, really try to help as much as we could in the whole overall space program. You sort so of made the best of it. We absolutely made the best of it. That's yeah. amazing, Sunny. When we last talked, you talked you were four months into what turned into a nine and a half month stay is there anything that you learned about yourself during that time and and the other thing I would ask is the takeaway that I had from that interview was you were such an optimist like you just kind of beamed positivity was there ever a time that you kind of felt down or like what am I doing oh of course, of course. I mean I'm human right I'm not sure, a, I'm not sure. a robot so you know there's there's definitely times when you hear things that you're missing at home it's like oh gosh we should have been home for that you know and, sure. and you know just trying to keep up with family and friends I mean living in space is awesome it's my job I love it I wouldn't do it if I didn't absolutely love it but of course holidays like I mentioned is is, is a little bit tough but uh, I was able to get uh, my crewmates which at that time were all males to 
decorate Christmas cookies. We had <laughs> yeah. Christmas stockings. And so you, you sort of bring it back and have a family wherever you are yeah. and, and try to keep those traditions. And I think that's what keeps you happy and positive. Like, of course, the work is wonderful, but, you know, trying to, uh, you know, not um, focus on the things that you miss, make it happen there. When you looked out of the cupola at this beautiful world of ours. You had mentioned that you're now sort of a geography pro. You're picking out the lights, the, oh, yeah. the distinct shape of the Cape Cod arm, oh, or whatever course. it might be. That's easy. <laughs> That's easy nowadays. <laughs> Is there anything that really like stuck out to you that was like very surprising seeing it from space? So interestingly enough, we, um, we were very lucky also because we had amazing aurora last summer. And I yep. think I mentioned that. We also had a couple comets while we were up there. Wow. So the longer you stay up, the more cool things you get to see in the universe. Um, we also, different from last mission, there's all sorts of Starlink uh, yeah. satellites crossing our path that was not like that about 10 years ago when I was up there last time. So that's incredible. But also you can definitely see um, more people on the planet, a lot more lights, or or people are living in places which were a little bit more remote. Who knows? Maybe COVID. I don't know what drove that. Sure. But there's uh, different light systems all over the world, depending on how people have energy, right? So it's just really incredible to watch how the the world, which is alive, and the atmosphere around it, which is absolutely alive, have changed over the years. So it's always fun to go check out the cupola. I've heard other astronauts talk about the overview effect mm -hmm. and how it creates a whole different perspective. Did you experience that at all? Oh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, perspective absolutely changes when you're up in space. I mean, obviously we have international partners where while we're up there, we're all working together. I mean, it's very obvious when you look down at the planet, like this is one, a planet, and two, we only have, you know, 30% of the planet where we're all living on land mass, right? 70% is ocean. Um, so there's a couple, you know, thoughts there that go through your mind of how, one, we should be nicer to each other. Uh, you know, we all are the same. And actually, that actually was a conclusion from this whole mission. When I came back, people are all like, you know, glad you're back, glad you're back. Just in general, uh, something not to lose sight of. People are nice, people are care. Yeah. And people care about each other. Humanity cares. Um, when you um, do some training, whether it was the helicopter missions in the first part of your career or nowadays, is there any part of a mission that really sticks out as like, training did not prepare me for this? Oh, wow. Uh, well, you can't really prepare for living in space. Okay. That's, I think, the biggest thing. Like, they tell you all about the mechanics of uh, the environmental control system, meaning like the bathroom, the air, the carbon dioxide, eating, all that. You you, you think you know what you're going to do, but then... Conceptually you, you, right, understand Right, it. right, right. But yeah. then you get up there and you have to just... Everybody is a little bit individual in all of those aspects, and so yep. you have to just figure, figure it out. But you, you will. You can't escape yep. it. That's where you are. So you're going to have to learn how to go to the bathroom in space, which is a little bit... I was very happy with the gravity assist when I came home. I'll just say that. <laughs> a lot of the astrophysicists that I've talked to, like at MIT or Harvard, right down the road from us, they always say space is hard, but it's worth it. To you, why is space worth it? Yeah, it, it is hard to get humans into space. This is something that's a little bit tricky. We're going back to the moon, of course, uh, but we're, we're, hopefully our idea is to go back on the poles, which is a little bit different from the equator. It is difficult, but in the process of having those goals, going back to the moon sustainably, living there, and then creating potentially a station or a place where we would be on the moon is going to open up doors for when we go to Mars, right? So all, but in that process, we don't even know half the questions to ask. Yeah. And so in the process of getting there, we're going to learn so much more about smarter questions to ask to get to the next place. And in those answers, as we derive them, we're going to find out all sorts of processes and scientific experiments and uh, discoveries that we can use back here on Earth. There's a ton of them. It's called spin-offs, which uh, NASA does write up about. Um, and we're doing things not only for exploration, working together internationally, but also things that are going to come back and help us here on Earth. So we're not just thinking outside the box. We're like building a box and then thinking outside yep, of it. Yeah, exactly. And along with that is all the industry, right? right, that, right. Um, that's really cutting edge industry, like uh, advances in welding, you know, advances of and additive technologies, all of that is really required for these new spacecraft that we're creating. And so all that comes back to us here on Earth. So you talk about your roots in Needham, and I know that was super important. You remember some of your science teachers back in oh, the day. Oh, absolutely, yep. And what role do you, or, or to people that want to study STEM in the future, specifically like young girls, what would you say to them that 
they can achieve in the future. So I, I first I'd say why not, right? Yeah. So um, you know you're right alongside your male counterparts in in school. You're probably um, doing better than them, <laughs> yep. but and regardless, um, go try stuff. That's what I would say. Like, don't worry about you know not liking something or not, or not doing well at it. Tr then try something else because you're going to find your passion. And then when everybody finds their passion, they they do it well. And in the STEM fields, that's what we're looking at. Not everybody's going to know about flying in space. We just want to know that people can learn or can't have an open mind and curious and can learn and want to explore. If there was one lesson that you could take from spaceflight back to Earth and teach people about, what would that Ooh, be? That's, there's so many. That's a, that's a hard one to single out. Um, the, the biggest lesson is uh, not everything is going to go as planned. As you learned. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, of course, uh, our stay is a big, is obvious, an obvious one there. But like every spacewalk that I've had, it's really hard to mimic every single thing on Earth. And so something's going to go a little bit different. And that's OK. Prepare yourself. Be ready to adapt and to make the best of the situation. I think NASA calls it an anomaly, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. When, when something goes a little <laughs> bit <laughs> off, yeah. we learn from it, though. We learn from it. Yes, exactly. There and we go. I think that's the biggest point. I love that. When it comes to transitioning back, is there anything that you absolutely missed beyond maybe visiting family and friends that you just had to do, whether it was your first lobster roll of the season yeah. or something oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did have lobster this year, of okay. course. I've had, I've had it three times already. I, <laughs> I'll go. be embarrassed to say that. But yes, I've had lobster <laughs> a couple of times. And yeah, I've missed it incredibly. I just, you know, what I really miss and I can't wait for is the fall colors. There you go. Is there a favorite place that you like to go? Um, up in Maine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you don't They're, have to say. Yeah, the, the leaves are pretty bright yellow, bright red, and I, I can't wait to see that. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you. I think you're an inspiration for so many. Um, your, your passion for space and then the struggles that you faced, you and Butch, and, and just seeing that optimism just beam out of you at all times. It's really just been a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Thank you. I feel very fortunate and uh, just happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you.